tell me what um, supermassive really means. How, how big are these beasts? How do you describe <laughs> how massive they are? I don't know. It's almost mind boggling indeed. Like, so I uh, describe them as 150 million. The biggest one is 150 million times the mass of our sun. That's really big, almost unimaginably big. So yeah, it's really hard to almost grasp this type of uh, size and mass that's all accumulated in one little area. And there's two of them. So the big one, 150 million times the size. And then there's the smaller one, which is just 6 million times the size, but that's still <laughs> oh, just, really, oh, really just massive. That. <laughs> um, yeah. and, 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 and can you remind us exactly what a black hole is, you know, for the lay person like me. <laughs> yes. So this is actually always a matter of lots of people are fascinated by black holes because we don't really understand them. So a black hole just means there's so much mass in one spot that even light cannot escape anymore. It's all basically it's stuck in there. It can't get out. Um, and what that means is you need to bring a lot of mass into one really small area. So if we put like 10 times the sun into a black hole, that would be just the size of 30 kilometers. That's really small. Like I run marathons. I could run that, the mass of the sun. And in case of these objects, like they're big, but you would put millions of solar masses into the area of like from here to the sun. So it would be that big. But for the amount of mass that's still... Um, really really small so these objects are just really really dense and that's that's and, what we know about them and there's the little ones the mass of our sun typically and then there's those super massive ones that i researched that are usually at the centers of galaxies and there's lots of we don't understand really how those form and grow their masses and that's what i've been studying in this work and what does it mean to find two of them so close together like that um yeah so we do think those two are so close together to each other because the, the offset one that is not in the center of the current galaxy came in with another galaxy. It used to be the center of a galaxy. And then when that galaxy got accreted and destroyed, that nucleus, that nucleus, yeah, of that former galaxy survived. And now it's on, it's basically caught in the act of merging with the center of that galaxy. And so we basically catch them in the act of this process of growing the mass and soon they will coalesce in, in one even bigger black hole. Which sounds really scary when it's, I think <laughs> these are the two closest to Earth, so that will be one super massive, doubly super massive, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't even know how to describe the scale of it, black hole cl relatively close to yeah. Earth. Does it have any impact on us, its presence? On, on us, no. So I always, I, I, I'd like to explain people, astronomical scales are astronomically close. This just means for us, it's five times closer than the next best record holder. We can study it in much more detail. However, this is still really, really, really far. Like for example, our own supermassive black hole in the Milky Way, it's 26,000 light years from us. This object is like 450, 450 million light years from us. So it's still really, really far. It won't do anything to us particularly, but what it does to us astronomers, it gives us a new insight in how this process works because it's astronomically speaking, really close. So we can really look into detail in it. And that's why it's so amazing. Mm -hmm.